where do I begin? Um, hi pals, it's me, RT, they, them pronouns only, thank you very much. Um, we are here with the third update to my Takayasu's flare and treatment process thing. I thought I was going to have maybe like a bit of a gap between the last video and this one and was maybe going to be doing some other videos but um my appointment yesterday was just a little bit I don't know just not what I was expecting to happen so I feel like I just need to film this and tell you about it. Filming this on Thursday, Tuesday I had my blood test thankfully that went by pretty okay. Minimal bruising for once, we got a tiny little dot going on. Considering my skin gets really sad and angry, doing okay. Wednesday was my appointment. The appointment time was at 1.30. My previous experience of these appointments is that I will get my, I don't know, obs done. I don't know if that's what they call it, but like blood pressure and weight and then wait for my appointment and then the appointment I will have uh, like a physical examination where I have to take off most of my clothes <laughs> and like have a discussion about stuff so I think the first thing that just like really got me was when we were doing my blood pressure and stuff um for one the nurse clearly was not prepared for me because um Every time I go to these appointments, I have been told that my uh, consultant rheumatologist would want uh, at least an attempt at uh, getting my blood pressure in both arms. Um, because obviously, one arm is pulseless. <laughs> we, we kind of have to make sure it's that's still the case, I guess. Um, and then the other arm shows what my blood pressure actually is. So she was not prepared. I definitely had to prompt her to do the other arm too. Um, and I said, probably won't get it with the automatic like big machine that she had. Most people only can get any kind of blood pressure reading with like manual tools. Um, and she was like, oh, we don't have any. I was like, okay, I don't know how in a hospital you don't have uh, the manual stuff to do a blood pressure reading, but live your life. So we tried it with the big automatic machine and we got a reading. I could not tell you how long it's been since I've had a reading. I think my last reading I ever had on that arm was in a and &E in the summer of 2019, soon after my Crohn's diagnosis when I was having the erythema nodosum flare because I do remember being like hey you're not gonna get shit from this arm um it doesn't work and I remember I was trying anyway and it working but since then I have never had a reading so getting a reading <laughs> is pretty wild uh because the last time I was at this kind of appointment was August last year so 2021. I had several ladies trying uh, and they tried with multiple different blood pressure machines and you know manual and stuff like that and they just couldn't get a reading on my right arm. It was so painful. <laughs> I hate these people because like it hurts a lot because it has to squeeze so tight to attempt to get a reading from my arm but um yeah so I was so shocked I had kind of given up on the possibility of, I don't know whether it's growing or creating or like <laughs> my body compensating by making, I think it's capillary veins to compensate for the narrowed artery in my arm. But maybe, maybe something is happening. Uh, I don't know. Um, but the reading for that arm wasn't like a huge amount different to my left arm either. So I think my left arm was higher than it normally is. I think it was like 145 over 85. And then my right arm was 155, I think, over 99. Um, so, you know, like, that's not even like a huge difference. Yeah, just the fact that I got a reading is genuinely insane. So, um, yeah, that's how my appointment started. <laughs> we then 
waited for ages because she's always behind she's very busy has loads of appointments whatever she's in high demand in it i wasn't sure how the appointment was going to go because um the phone call i'd had with her last week did not make me feel super great <laughs> did not make me feel very confident generally definitely brushed off my um medical trauma with cannulas when on the phone which is never good i you know you never want to be brushed off for people literally traumatizing you and assaulting you but it is what it is so we came in she just wanted to see generally how i was feeling since going on the 40 milligrams and i was like yep yeah, pretty much all of the uh symptoms i was having are gone nothing hurts sleeping better yeah you know the usual vibes she asked me to go through all of my meds again as they always do <laughs> um so the only changes really were obviously that i'm on 35 milligrams of the steroids at the moment but she already has all these details um and i gave her the information about my ahd stimulant medication she did not say anything about it so i have taken that as um a good sign that if i'm feeling well maybe i can start up on them again so i told her what the brand was she searched up what the actual proper name was for it and i told her the dose so that's something else that might be happening this week i plan on doing my blood pressure uh, and pulse tomorrow seeing how it's all doing and maybe sending a message to the prescribing nurse of, from the adhd services to say hey what do you think about starting up again? So that is uh, also very exciting to me because my brain do not work. <laughs> so yeah, besides that, went through all the medications. Then I had to, because I was dressed like this yesterday, uh, I had to take off my dungarees and my socks, wash my hands um, and have her and the rheumatology registrar come and check my pulse and shit everywhere. So. I did bring up the blood pressure machine picking up a pulse um, and they were both also very surprised too. They're like, yeah, we were looking at like your scans from before and there's basically no, <laughs> like that that artery is basically like, that. There, there is no artery anymore. So yes, they think that it might be a sign of these like capillary veins maybe developing. But we don't know. This is the first time it's ever happened. I've never been able to get a reading on my home blood pressure monitor. They went through all the usual like veins to check, veins, arteries to check. They check my arms with like fingers, like doing that. Um, and then everywhere else they use the stethoscope, I think except from the feet. So yeah, I think everything has stayed relatively the same. The, this side nothing there maybe i'm not even here and everywhere else was okay fine or good like i have apparently very good pulse in my feet <laughs> and that has not changed thankfully i guess <sighs> um but also they check for i don't know if this is how you say it but bruits or bruis or i think it's bruits but it's some kind of like whooshy sound that sometimes people with takiyasus have. I do not have any of those. I don't know what it would mean if I did have them, but I do not have bruits. <laughs> so yeah, everything was pretty much the same. Heart sounds good. Uh, breathing good. The the arteries and stuff in my stomach fine. Yeah. Put my clothes back on and sat back down, and then this like next bit is another moment where i was just like wait what the fuck really <laughs> um i feel like this whole appointment was just one thing after another of like genuine shock for me and also them in a lot of ways basically i think i've said this in one of my recent videos i think it might have been in my last <clears throat> video that's going up the day i'm filming this of like, you know, they would rather not take me off any medications that are working well for me, 
So it's trying to work out whether there's something that can be added or adjusted rather than risking losing this entire like medication. And it seems to be that I got kind of lucky, question mark, <laughs> to be under rheumatology and gastro because they both kind of run things differently with how they medicate people. Because um, like apparently under, blah, under rheumatology, my adalimumab injections, they only do it every two weeks. They don't have the option of going up to weekly, whereas I had the option because of gastro with uh, IBDs and stuff like that. Um, it's common practice that people can do their injections every week rather than every other week if necessary. Um, so, you know, that was something that I had in my in my favour. I do feel like that, that injection is helping my Crohn's because when I had to come off it for a week, the further I got into that week, the more I started to experience more Crohn's related symptoms and like reactions to foods that are actually safe foods for me. Like it was just a couple of the last few evenings of that week when I would eat just like cake pudding, cake with some custard. Um, that has never been a trigger food for me as long as there's no dairy in it. Um, but both evenings, uh, yeah, two or three evenings, um, I got quite painful bloating, which I only really get from eating trigger foods or being in a flare. So I think that the adalimumab every week is helping my Crohn's in that way as well. And then, so this next bit is like where actually rheumatology has more leeway of adjusting medications I'm on for both things. Um, so I've been on my Captopurian since basically I was diagnosed with Crohn's in 2019, um, in June. And we haven't really done anything with that for a really long time. I, that's just what I was started on. It, it was relatively new, is relatively new. It has like a sibling medication called azathioprine. Um, you know, for some reason, I just got my Captopurian. Apparently it's another thing common within like gastro they tend to use mecaptopurin which i don't think is necessarily accurate um because all of the crohn's like groups and pages i've been on most people tend to be on azathioprine rather than mecaptopurin but this is what my um rheumatologist tell me tell me that in rheumatology they tend to put people on azathioprine and it, it, there's not any particular reason for it it just is how it's been going but whatever so the way they work in gastro for the mecaptopurian is um to do with levels in bloods so i've been on half a pill <laughs> since i started i've been on 25 milligrams i've had to cut my pills up um for like yeah three year can we count i'm gay yeah nearly three years now um and they've always kind of said oh my levels are a bit on the low side but like not enough they want to up the dose and I have tried to ask these questions before like a few times and I've just kind of always got like a stock answer of now we don't really need to check it anymore once you've been put on it that's just kind of it as long as there weren't any like initial reactions and shit then they just kind of leave you be um but it turns out the way rheumatology do it is they actually are more uh, more likely to base your dose on your weight and um joke but also not a joke another time my fatness has saved my ass bitch <laughs> just more reasons to be a little bit fatter you know bitch <laughs> a little bit of chubbies um because i have quite a bit of leeway <laughs> um with experimenting with doses because i am fat <laughs> something to do with uh, the dose to kg or something it's something like 1.5 or something per kg um and i'm on 25 so i think i can go like up and above 100 i think um maximum probably 150 ish so yeah that's what we're doing so so far um yeah i just said that that's really cool i had no idea that that was even an option i've never seen this written anywhere um i don't really know many people with takiyasus who are on 
my caps purine or as a side brin or that and uh Adeline Rab or whatever or I've just never seen anyone discuss it and I mean I haven't really discussed my makeup Purian on here that often because generally since I started it and then went on to the Adeline Rab, it's kind of just um, a known basic thing that if you are on both it helps keep you more likely to stay on Adeline Rab for longer. I don't really understand exactly how that works but it basically helps prevent you from building up word I can't remember against the adalimumab. So uh, that was something that was discussed with me in gastro quite a while ago. And I was, I was, you know, aware and happy to stick with the macapsuring because I hadn't had any bad reactions to it. It just wasn't doing what it needed to do for my Crohn's. And adalimumab was the only other option and I hadn't been diagnosed with tachy issues yet. Uh, so yeah, it was just kind of weird, crazy, wild to be honest that um out of everything I've done for my own reading and reading of other people's experiences and researching and reading like um all these proper studies and things like that this has never come up <laughs> so I wasn't prepared for actually oh we'll just up a dose that you're already on and see how it goes um, I was expecting something kind of shittier, like, ah, uh, we're going to take you off the Adalimumab and put you on something else, or, oh, uh, we're just going to have to leave you on these high dose of steroids and that's just it because we don't know what to do, or, oh, uh, we're going to put you on methotrexate pills or injections instead or as well. Um, I had no idea that there was a possibility that my macapturin could just be upped. So, the plan is, I think it was today, uh, I'm also, like, getting headaches at the moment. I don't know if it's because of the light. I was dehydrated yesterday, I forgot to drink, so I had a pretty shitty migraine yesterday. And sitting in the window is hurting my head. Um like in here. I think I'm also due to see my chiropractor, so that tends to be where the uh fun parts of migraines come and go. Um but yes, yeah, so anyway. Uh, I think today was my first dose on 50 milligrams. We'll be doing that for a month. In two weeks, I'll have a blood test. Uh, and then another two weeks, I'll have another blood test and then speak to my consultant rheumatologist on the phone again. I think I also have a gastro appointment coming up in May. And the plan is to up the dose further as well as we need. My blood tests have come back a lot better. I don't know why I didn't say that at the very beginning of this video. I'm a bit scatterbrained with this whole thing because um, I'm just very shocked and surprised by numerous things. Um, I knew my blood test would be back better because I just have felt so much better. My CRP is down at like six or seven. Um, ESR is still high, but it has come down by 40 points. So it was at like 111, 111. Angel number speech. Um, and I think is at 70 something now but that's as well wasn't really worrying them that it was still high it apparently esr can take longer to come back down anyway so yeah the blood tests will be checking those as well and i think i don't know what exactly the levels are i think it's to do with i have the thing here don't i <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to show you my, the back of my blood test forms and if there's going to be like, uh, I, I'm going to dox myself. No, I think I'm good. So like, here are my blood test forms. They're quite old. Um, So I think they tend to be, I think they check like F, I, I don't know if, what FBC is. That's one that gets checked a lot. Other levels... I think it's to do with, um, what is the word? I don't know. On my analumumab one, I've got UNEs, LFT, CRP, FBC. On my rheumatology one is CRP, <laughs> LLE, uh, CREAT, FBC and ESR. Um, I think it's something to do with the levels for like anemia and that too like general levels like that i did get some more those are old ones i got some more when i was there um but yeah so that's the plan for now we'll see how i do on the 50 see what my bloods look like on the 50 for you know with two week gaps in between 
um and then i think we might be like then upping it again to 100 i don't know if we were going from 50 to 75 or like 50 straight to 100 or what um but i think it also is dependent on like how i just do with these blood tests and how i respond but she's basically said you know i've been tolerating this drug at a low dose for three years um it's probably like the safest and best idea to go with that um and you know just me being a little fatty comes to save the day again babes like <laughs> like no lie the more and more i learn about uh the horrendous fat phobia in um medicine and the amount of times actually my excess or you know excess weight has actually come in handy for me a lot of times for a lot of reasons you know and this is just one of those just being a little bit fatter i have a bit more of a, an extended uh dosage possibilities for uh trying to help my rare disease <laughs> basically the idea is so we're still going with um dropping five milligrams of steroids every five days until i get to 10 we've changed it slightly and then it'll be down a milligram every month or something from then and the idea is that the macapturin will either help me be able to come off the steroids totally or help me be on a lower dose long term <laughs> so yes we've had a bit of a wild one i'm not gonna lie I was not expecting to get a blood pressure reading from my fucked up arm. I was not expecting to have such a generally positive outlook after this appointment either, both just generally how I'm feeling and with the care plan in place. Um, I have another face-to-face -face appointment with my rheumatologist in June. Um, so yeah, I feel like this might be the last sort of update for maybe a couple of months believe me i have had enough of talking about it but yeah like i just uh i'm just a bit shocked um this is kind of the first flare i've had since uh, i was diagnosed which was like nearly two years ago now um so yeah um but we've also had the agreement generally that we would rather avoid me getting pet scans um, as much as possible so we were both on the sort of same page of we didn't want to put me in through for a pet scan anyway but because i am feeling a lot better on the steroids it's not really necessary uh we know we know we know <laughs> we know we know what the fuck's wrong and i think the pet scans will be reserved for like <sighs> up coming planned surgeries possibly to make sure that i am no longer inflamed i guess um or if there is another really really bad dip in the next few years um but yeah <sighs> yeah just uh, to just put it simply i feel kind of relieved that this is what has come from that i was very concerned obviously my last video last week I was really concerned about my options. I am always going to be. It's always going to suck. Um, but you know, the possibility of my my arm possibly developing capillaries has almost given me a renewed uh, hope in that um, and makes me want to maybe get back on top of doing more upper body exercise and cardiovascular exercise when I uh, feel able to. Uh, I mean, since being on the steroids, I have definitely walked a lot more in this last, like, five days than I have in the last month or so. <laughs> um, and as the weather gets nicer and there's stuff to do outside um, that I don't have to leave the premises to do, um, you know, I think there's definitely going to be more things keeping me active at home, which will be nice. Um... And that hopefully it will help a bunch of stuff going on really uh my jaw problems have completely gone uh i have low-key some concerns that maybe my jaw might have been related to my attack of the asses who would describe 
I'm not even here. Um, and yeah, so tomorrow I want to contact my AHD prescribing nurse, let him know what's going on, uh, let him know that my rheumatologist knows about this medication and has not said anything bad <laughs> about me going back on it. And yeah, who knows, hopefully some good stuff will come from it. Uh, I will just give an update as well on yesterday's migraine. Wow, I seem to have like maybe one or a migraine a year now. Um, like, oh, I need to stop looking up into the fucking sky because I can feel one like threatening me. But basically, I've I get rare aura migraines every year or so. When the first one happened, it was before I think any of these conditions were, were diagnosed. I think it was like twenty eighteen. I changed from the combined contraceptive pill to progesterone only um, and it does only seem to be like once every now and again I think yesterday was uh dehydration that may have been the main trigger for it to be honest um and a little bit of like stress to be honest I've been stressed my dude trying to like get through day day in day out all this <laughs> oh shit um so I just did what I always do. I could tell it was an aura migraine because it was in both of my eyes. Like that's something that I worry about and I'm concerned about is like sight loss and sight issues. So I have had to try and work out how to pinpoint it as a migraine versus an eye problem. And my main one is, hey, can I still see it when I close one eye? <laughs> so yeah, I can still see it. it t they tend to mainly be on the left but um, they they are quite like just slightly off center in my vision and it tends to be in sort of like a C shape a lot of the times. Worse on the left eye but still in the right eye. I kind of describe it as a bit of a kaleidoscope. It wasn't like flashing lights kind of thing although it can kind of look a bit more like that depending on what's in front of me but it came on as I was in um, some charity shops so it was quite bright in that daylight and I don't think I had my sunglasses on me. Um, so because it was so bright outside, it looked very kaleidoscopy. Um, but yeah, when we got home, I just put on sunglasses. I got some ice packs out for the back of my neck, back of my head, front of my head. Um, and just laid and listened to the audiobook that I just finished today, actually. Someday, Someday, Maybe by, I think, Lauren Graham who played Lorelai in Gilmore Girls. I really enjoyed that book as well, that was fun. Very light and light, blah, blah, blah. very nice and light-hearted. Um, and yeah, actually quite a good way of, to spend uh, an, an aura migraine. <laughs> was just laying, uh, drinking some water, eating some cereal um, and listening to an audiobook um, to pass the next hour or so. The eye disturbances went away and then turned into actual headache pain, so. Hi Layla. Again, more confirmation to me that that was a migraine rather than eye problems. Um, I tend to find with the aura ones, the aura will come on and then as the aura sort of goes away, the pain comes. Um, I just stuck my finger on my glasses, good. Yeah, like for the most part it's just uh, my body saying, hey, can you like slow down for a sec and maybe drink some fucking water, please. Um, as I said, I'm probably like due for some crackalackin from the chiropractor. Um, that's sort of my main way of keeping my migraines and headaches under control. Because in the first lockdown of 2020, oh my god, I had just like migraines and headaches 24-7 because I wasn't able to see my chiropractor as often as I needed to. So yes, that's next week. Hopefully that'll help. I'm going to go drink some more water and lay down. But yeah, just wanted to give an update. I need to have a bath today. <laughs> I've lost track of my days. I don't know where I am. But for now, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I also need to pick up my Mercapturian um, prescription. Like, luckily I asked for another prescription with the right dose because I actually did. <laughs> I only had one dose left <laughs> this morning. I had 50 milligrams. I was like, oh shit. I just haven't fucking ordered my Mercapturian in a while and I forgot even with the like Lloyd's uh, pharmacy app reminders. it uh, It's no good, babe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for being part of this journey with me. Leave a like, helps with the algo. 
leave a comment helps with the algo um if you are someone with crohn's or takayasus or vasculitis some of that sort of thing and you have heard or seen people with both like have these kinds of um medication options i'd love to know more because i generally haven't seen anyone say that anywhere and i am chronically online um and a chronically chaotic researcher so i'm just very surprised that i just didn't know about it yeah subscribe to my channel i i do talk about other things <laughs> but recently it's kind of just been the chronically sick vlogs so um if you like the vlog content let me know um if you like me talking on topics let me know let me know what topics you want to hear about i have some ideas but every time i go to film one i've got another vlog update so i'm getting distracted you know but yeah i would love to reach 500 subscribers before my two-year takiyasu's anniversary in june very early june so you have a couple of months <laughs> share my videos invite your friends <laughs> that's where we're at this week um and i'll see you next week bye